Hey guys, I am back with part 29 of Let's Play Pokemon White, and we are now moving into the winter season, actually, because it has just turned winter as of yesterday, and, uh, yeah, I skipped this battle because something went screwy with the recorder, and because YouTube hates me, because I can't upload 15 minute videos, so I had to cut that out. Alright, so, um, you're just moving on to the next route now, heading for Opuculid City, however you pronounce it. And, uh, as you can see, the water's frozen everywhere now, so it's a lot easier to get around. I'm not going to run into wild Pokemon easily. And, uh, yeah, we just got TM36 Sludge Bomb right there, and, um, just gonna skate across the water here. This place is like. Uh, what is it with, um, Game Freak having a, uh, interest in puzzles with ice sliding and stuff like that? Well,. We have to skate across uh, in the fashion very similar to the ice cave from Johto, like I commented in one of my previous videos. And uh, this parcel lady is a trainer, so we'll fight her. Alright, so uh, let's see what she's got. Parcel lady in winter seems appropriate. She's got a frillish, a female frillish. And I'm gonna go in with Galvantula, and this this route is like the perfect place for, Gal for Galvantula to be um, raised. Because he's got so much... Uh, advantage over all the Pokemon in the tr that the trainers have in, well, in this area. And Electro Ball kills that foolish with one shot and sending out Ducklet next. I'm not going to uh, waste Thunder on these guys because they're already weak to electricity and very weak to uh, electricity, mind you. So um, I'm just going to go with Electro Ball because no bother wasting a very powerful attack on something that can be beaten very easily. So, uh, that takes care of that parcel lady, and we are now moving on to the next trainer, which is somewhere around here. I think that's her up there. Uh, this maze is so annoying. Alright, uh, I guess we'll have to surf on the water. Yeah, we'll surf. Jellicent will surf for us. Jelly. And we're across. Okay, so there's an entrance to a deeper part of the forest right there, which will allow you to get more items and fight more trainers. I recommend going there before getting to the city. So, uh, we're fighting this trainer, and she's got a Cincino, or however, however you pronounce it, a Kin Kino, or a Chin Chino, Cincino, I, I don't know, I could be wrong. Anyway, I'll go with Thunder, because this thing, I can tell, is fast, and it's also very, uh, very tolerant, so I'll go with, uh, Thunder. I work better way when you have 100% accuracy with Thunder. You never have to worry about using Thunder ever again when you have Compound Eyes Galvantula, because it will always hit. It's good special attack, and the stab also helps, so you're doing a lot of damage almost all the time, as long as your accuracy isn't lowered. So that's great. Um, we'll continue into this part of the forest now. As you can see, it's gotten quite deep. More of Icarus. Alright, so... um. Let's go up the snow steps here, see if we can find any items. Oh, there's one. Alright, we'll have to surf across the water to get. So, Jellicent once again. Hop. And out of the water. And we got a max potion. Doesn't it hurt Jellicent to actually uh, surf on that water? Um, isn't he more like a warm water? Wait a minute, water is hot. Water is warm underneath the surface. Alright, never mind then. Uh, sorry, I'm just rambling. Alright, so we're now into our next trainer and. He is also a ranger. So what's this guy got? Harry. He's got a vanilla. It seems appropriate. And I'll go with Galvantula. Okay, now I'd like to point out something that probably some of you might not know, but um, in my opinion, I think ice types should be resistant to electricity. And the reason I'm saying this is because ice is conductive to electricity. It, it's like it's like rubber. It can't. It, uh, electricity doesn't travel through it. Uh, at least that's what I've read. So, um, technically, it should either not affect Ice-type Pokemon completely, or they should be resistant to electric attacks. So, I'm just pointing that out in case some of you... Just a little bit of trivia there for you. Okay, so this guy's got a Fracture, and um, thankfully he didn't damage me. He just went for a Dragon Dance, and I'm still faster than him, so I'll just signal being the guy. And Fracture's gone for it. And uh, it's funny that I thought Fracture would be the... Uh, the um, Garchomp of this uh, generation. I mean, you know he has really high attack, but um, he's not very as good. I've heard from a lot of people that he's not as good as uh, people would have thought him to be. Like, they thought they'd be uh, like more sent to the Uber section instantly in the Smogon tier. But uh, he's not. He's in the uh, overused or underused tier, actually. I think he's overused tier. And uh, he doesn't do very well against Garchomp because of his low speed. 
which is really unfortunate because I, I think I like uh, Hexerus. I would have used him otherwise, but uh, I'm not. I would still use him. I just uh, just he isn't as uh, reliable as Garchomp would be. But I, I would never use Garchomp anyway. I don't like using Ubers, but I would. Uh, I would use Hydreigon. Hydreigon I, I really like, so I'll, I'll stick with that. But anyway, uh, she's got an Amalga, and I've just uh, blasted it out of the sky with Thunder, so um, Dodogon goes to level 40 as well, and he wants to learn Night Slash, so that could be good. Uh, actually, Night Slash... No, Night Slash, I, I won't give it to him. Night Slash's base power is only 70, so I think I'll stay with Crunch. Uh, the reason why you're asking me, why are you not giving him Night Slash because of the high critical hit ratio? Well, the reason being is because um, I have Sheer Force. Sheer Force, like I said, will boost any attack that has a secondary effect by 30%. Crunch's secondary effect is lowering the opponent's defense, so that will get a boost of 30%, making it, let's see now, 110 base power. But um, it would be pointless for Night Slash. Night Slash would only give me like 100 base power and the critical hit ratio would be nullified because of the sheer force ability. So it's it's pretty much pointless to just uh, it's pretty much pointless just to give him Night Slash so I, I, I did just um, stick with Crunch. Alright so I'm going with uh, the signal beam now to take out this Maractus and uh, that uh, takes care of that trainer. Right so um, Let's move on to the next area, or next trainer, I guess. Citrus Berry. What is what Rangers always giving you berries when you finish them in this game? Alright, so I'm uh, going to. Yeah, never mind. I think I'll switch the items from Dredagon and give it to Crocodile. Alright, so Crocodile's given the EXP share, so he will level up a bit more, because I think he does need to be leveled up a bit. I know Jalsen's only newly evolved, but uh, I think Crookdale needs a more. Alright, so let's just skate our way around here. Oh, it's mind boggling, this maze is. Alright, so skate down here, and uh. Oh, never mind. Okay, walk across here, down. Oh, good. Okay, let's say uh, the fisherman here. Is he a trainer or is he just a standby? No, he's a trainer. Okay, so uh, let's fight the guy. What type does he have? Oh wait, let me guess. Water. And he's got a Basculin. Red or blue? It's blue, okay. He's got a blue Basculin, and I'm gonna go with Galvantula, and why waste a Thunder on this thing? I'll just go with Electro Ball. You know, I think Basculin's a combination of both uh, Caravana and Magikarp. I mean, it just shows it in so many ways. I think Basculin's blue form is more Magikarp than Caravana, and uh, vice versa for the red one. He's gonna send a Stunfisk now. I absolutely hate this Pokemon. The weird thing about this fish is the fact that he's the only fish in the entire game that isn't part water. He's not water at all. He's just ground and electric. It's kind of weird, don't you think? But the one thing that annoys me the most about this fish is that rape face smile he has in him all the time. It just creeps me out. Ugh. Well, um, I'll just use uh, Leap Play in the guy. And uh, what ability does he have? Does he have static? I'm not quite sure. But he's, he acts like a minefield in marshes. Like everyone steps on him and they get shocked. I don't know. Is he based off a of flounder or something? Whatever. Uh, the trainer's finished, so uh, he can leave this part of the forest, I think. Let's just uh, try now. Um, go up. Go, go. Just, um, so uh, we'll just walk down here out the forest. This maze is annoying. Alright. Um, uh, okay, we're back on route 8. Go down, past the ice, cross the ice. Uh, parcels full of TMs. Are parcels full of TMs? TM4 HG facade. Facade. Oh, well, that's a good ability, I guess, but I won't be using it. Uh, how is it a parcel full of TMs? And how does that make any sense? Alright, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we're on to our next fisherman here, and he's got a red basculin. You see what I mean? It looks more uh, piranha like rather than a fish, or it was the other way around with the blue one. Alright, so I'll just Electro Ball this thing, and it's, uh, it's finished. So, uh, that, that, that takes care of Basculin, and, um, that's good. Alright, so, uh, we're on to our next one now. Another Basculin, and it's a blue one. Alright, so, uh, you know the drill, Electro Ball, and yes, Electro Ball does gain power the faster you are, just in case some of you noobs out there are not quite sure what it does. And that takes care of Basculin numbers one and two. So now, we're on to our next trader, which is this parcel lady, I think. Yeah, it's the parcel lady. 
Alright, so let's see, what's this one got? One Pokemon, alright, and she's got a Loma Mola. Alright, so uh, let's take this out with Galavantula. Uh, I think I'll thunder on this thing because this thing has quite a lot of HP. It's like the water version of Chansey. Uh, use Protect. Okay, let's try again. Thunder. Blast him. Boom! Alright, so... Let's see how much damage it does. Wow! Alright, that's pretty good because um, the base HP for a uh, normal is um, 150, so that's pretty uh, impressive. And then again, I am a couple of levels ahead. I can't tell if I'm under-leveled or over-leveled at this point of the game. I think I might be a little over-leveled. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, we are just about to get to the bridge now. So, uh, let's head through the door. Going through the bridge. First, let me check. Never mind. Okay, through the bridge. Oh, no. Why do you always interrupt me at the worst of times? I don't want to do my life. I'm thinking it might be model like Elessa. And think I would be research on Pokemon like Professor Juniper. If that's what I want to do, I'm going to have to know a lot about Pokemon. So, will you battle me, please? <laughs> do I have to? I mean, you said, to do may I battle you? Don't I get a choice? Do I have to battle you so much? Oh, no way I can avoid it now. Alright, so we're battling Bianca for the upteenth time. And she's got a stout land, so I'm going to go with Galmantula. I'm going to definitely use Thunder on this mutt because, well... The dog is clearly shows signs of having high HP, so I'm gonna, you know, blast it with electricity so it doesn't finish it off. Alright, and it goes with work up, which is even weird. Err. So, um Alright, so I'll just go straight for um Thunder now and finish this dog off. There, alright, so is he finished off? He should be finished off. Yes, he's finished off. Okay, so Stoutland is fainted. Eventually gets EXP, Crocodile gets EXP, and her next one is Simiseer. Send up Jellison. Alright, it's always a smart thing to do, or I could have used Lampent, maybe. Never mind. I'll go with Jellison, and I'm pretty sure I can stand up against this thing. Alright, so I uh, let's surf this thing. Lick! Please don't get paralyzed. Shoot, I had to ask, didn't I? Alright, so I got the power hex, and uh, the recorder kind of flinched there a bit, so uh, you missed about four or five seconds, but that's alright. Alright, so. Uh, Crocodile goes to level 42, and I think I will switch Pokemon out here because I don't want to risk uh, Jellison taking too much damage. I mean, he's already paralyzed. Alright, so I'll go with Galvantula because the signal being will hurt Masharna. Alright, so here's Masharna. In my opinion, it looks more like a pillow of some kind. Actually, I think that's what it's designed is based off a pillow. It makes a lot of sense considering it's known as the Dream Eater Pokemon and the fact that that's Dream Smoke coming out of its head. That's what you want to call it, if you want to ask me. Alright, so the signal beam this thing, and Masharna is dead. Sleeping with the fishes, whatever. And Galvantula grows level 43. Good. And now, her last Pokemon is a Samurott. <laughs> I don't even need to say what's going to happen here. It's pretty simple. Fight. Thunder. I win. And that takes care of Samurott. Salon, whatever it is, sea lion, walrus, something. Uh, whatever, that's Bianca finished, and that is pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and I will see you all, you know, during the week with part 30. So, um, you know, take care and peace out, guys. I, would you please shut up, Bianca? I want to get this video finished with Stop Team Plasma, don't allow trainers to be done. I think you've done the truth. Assuming. Yeah, it's very nice. Oh dear, I've come all this way and I'm afraid of bothering you when you're going through so much. Yeah, did you think about that before battling me? <sighs> Alright, I guarantee it. Alright, see you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Alright, see you guys and peace out.